so that's the topic for today. We have representatives of the World Bank Group, of the Europe European Bank for Reconstruction and Development from the Asian Development Bank and the African Development Bank. Um, and we have uh, the speakers are listed here. Um, and the way we actually structure uh, the next 45 minutes is that each of the organization will do a short introduction, a short uh, presentation about their institution. And then also give you a, a, a brief overview about the institution, but also about job opportunities and, and type of skills that they're looking for. Uh, but then I think the, the more interesting part, I mean, of course, this is very interesting as well, but I think for you, it's a great opportunity to actually um, put your questions to the panel. So they will all be up here. And uh, I hope we'll have uh, many, many good questions. Uh, they are here. Uh, they are really the experts. Um, they're all HR representatives. So they are the ones who will actually screen applications. Uh, so they know what they want to look for in a CV. They, want, they, know, they are the ones who actually can give, give you some good hints and tips about how you su should structure a motivation letter, a CV, and so on. So please ask tough questions. Uh, use uh, this time and this opportunity to do so. Uh, with that, I would actually like to hand over to the first presenter. I think it will be Roberto from the World Bank Group. Welcome. Thank you, yeah. Thank you Urs. And again, uh, Welcome and thank you for being here. It's a great opportunity to connect with you all. This is indeed a reaching out networking opportunity and we are trying to make the most of it. So we had time this morning and we have time later at the booth where you can keep asking questions that you will not be able to ask here. Anyway, uh, when we talk about the World Bank, uh, we always need to remind ourselves, our role and mission. You may be familiar with the mission statement, a world free of poverty, but only in the last few years the bank finally uh, has introduced goals. So finally, after 70 years, the organization has decided to be ready to be monitored and measured by results, goals, targets, and these are the goals, the two goals, the two twin connected goals that we have. And the first one is end extreme poverty by 2030, decrease in the percentage of the people living with less than $1.90 per day. Um, and the other one that is connected is to promote shared prosperity for the rest uh, uh, by fostering the income growth of the bottom 40 percent for every single developing country. So these are the goals and we do need to uh, remind ourselves this is, this is very important. Uh, what I, as a recruiter, what I always like to mention about the World Bank is something that I think it definitely is not unique and is also with the other organization here represented, but it's important. Everybody, and you might know already through friends, colleagues, or personal experience that these are competitive environments where Everybody says it's even difficult to get an internship or a short-term contract, but this is a good story so that sometimes we need to sell, advertise better. The World Bank is a group made of different entities. If you like two blocks, some entities are working with the governments, the public sector, the governments of the countries that we try to help. And then we have entities that are more focusing on private sector, trying to attract private sector investors. So why, for me as a recruiter, and for you maybe as an audience to understand, that at the end of the day, we have opportunities for people with diverse experience and background. And it's actually difficult to think of a, a background, academic and experienced background, that doesn't have opportunities to work. As far as you do something that is relevant or related to development in developing countries, you will find opportunities. If you come from academia, from the public sector, from the civil society, or more and more if you come from the private sector. The majority of the people hired by the World Bank, it's a constant data in the last few years, they come from the private sector. 
and the majority of the people maybe leave in the bank after two, five, ten years, they go into the private sector. So private sector is a key player when we talk about development these days. So that's important to, to consider. And sometimes being broad, being diverse also in terms of experience could be relevant and important. So if you're able to consider opportunities both in background private public sector, maybe you are even more competitive. When we talk about the bank, we talk about, that's what we do. So geographically, it's important to understand that we work in different regions. But at the same time, thematically, that's how you divide the work of the bank. So I will use this slide where you are reading the different sectors to understand this is what we do, this is what the kind of people and professionals we need. Some of the people will bring, I don't know, the transport, energy, the water experience from the economic finance perspective so economists and finance professionals, but we also need technical people, technical experts. To simplify, if we have a, a job in the transport sector, we will probably have a transport economist, but we'll also have a transport specialist. The same for governance, where we might need people with a, law, a legal background, and so on. So these are the areas. And of course, I will uh, use your question maybe to go a bit deeper to whatever you might need, but definitely an environment that doesn't recruit only economists, that, but also technical people. And maybe to some extent, you know, it's a 50-50 workforce balance between the two. And then I have a slide, and this is where maybe uh, your questions would help me to help us to provide more advice, how to be successful in terms of how to present your experience. You have tools like uh, professional engagement, you have tools like your CV, your statement of interest, and these are key elements, of course, to be successful. And the key message, and then I stop for here for the time being, is really when you connect with the World Bank to demonstrate that you are knowledgeable. Not only that you can highlight your experience, but you also know how your experience would be relevant vis-a-vis -vis the bank because you read, you researched, you are connected to that work and the challenges. So your questions will really help us to, to focus more on what is more needed for you at this point. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Roberto. Now, please do keep your questions. Uh, we'll, we'll move to questions after we have uh, all the presentations. So Pierre from the Asian Development Bank uh, based in Manila, welcome again and thanks for, for your presentation. If you could use this, this okay, mic. Thank you, Ross. So I cannot move. I have to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pierre Dayens. I'm working for the Asian Development Bank. I joined uh, ADB one year ago, so I'm still quite new in the system. Uh, I am a Swiss citizen, so please, Swiss people, I encourage to apply also. It's possible to make it. Um, ADB, uh, we are also a multi-development multi bank. Uh, we, have been, we, are, we were founded in 1966. We have 67 member countries. Uh, the majority of them are based in the Asia-Pacific region. <clears throat> we have very, very briefly uh, what we do uh, as a bank, as a multilateral development bank, is uh, we provide financial products. Basically, we lend money to countries uh, at a very interesting uh, rates. Uh, we also offer grants to countries who cannot afford to reimburse the loans. We also offer what we call uh, knowledge sharing or technical assistance in terms of policy advice, capacity building, uh, and technical assistance. So we are a bit uh, in the middle, I would say, as uh, between a commercial bank and a UN uh, organization. Uh, the purpose of uh, ADB is to provide uh, socio-economic and development impact to our development uh, countries. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. So where we are located, we are in, based in Manila, Philippines, uh, where we have around 2,000 staff, 1,000 national staff from, from the Philippines, 1,000 international uh, expatriates. And we have 29 countries, what we call resident missions, mm -hmm. from Azerbaijan, Armenia, up to uh, Fiji Island. As you can see, it's quite a broad range of, uh, of countries. We also have representative office uh, in Tokyo, in Washington, and in Frankfurt. 
So these are the, the, the type of jobs that we are uh, looking for. So people, of course, with engineering background in energy, infrastructure, water. Uh, now the trend is uh, to hire people with experience in the rail railway development systems, smart grids, and water resources. But we also have uh, staff working in procurement. We have a huge department working in procurement. We, have, we hire lawyers. Uh, we hire people specialized in treasury. Uh, controllers, safeguard specialists. We also have projects in education, health sector, and um, HR, of course, communication, IT. I wanted to give you a little bit of information if you would like to apply for our internship program. Um, so I, don't, I have my glasses, maybe it's better. <laughs> <laughs> So usually we hire people, I mean, we propose internships, around 30 uh, internships per year, uh, which last between two to six months. They are based in Manila. You should have ideally six months to one year of experience to apply. Uh, you, need, you need to be enrolled in either a master degree or a PhD degree. This is important. All our uh, internships will be advertised uh, on the first uh, first part of the year, between January and March 2017. This is the next application period. And the internship will start in June and until December. We also have what we call the Young Professional Program, which is uh, a little bit more competitive, as uh, we need to have people who, has, who either are graduated in, uh, as a master degree or a PhD degree, and who, has, who have at least uh, three, uh, sorry, five to six years of working experience. I said five or six, it's wrong, sorry. It's three to four years of experience. But that's true that in the last batch, we had people already with five or six years of experience, which uh, this is the basic experience that we request in order to, to be hired as a professional. So what we offer, uh, of course, if you, you are able to be selected as a young professional, we offer very... Uh, challenging and interesting assignments. You will be working also in a team and you will be rotating between different departments. You will be assigned to a specific operational department. It could be a East Asia department, Southeast Asia, Pacific. And then you will be rotating in a non-operational department. It could be risk management or strategy department, for example. So this is basic, basically our recruitment process. So you need to apply on our uh, online platform. It's called ACES. Uh, it's very simple. You go on the website. You will find it easily. Uh, HR do the pre-screening. Uh, then the, 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 first list, the first long list will be sent to the hiring department. Uh, the next step is to be invited uh, for preliminary interview. We conduct uh, phone interviews or VC interviews. And if you are pre-selected, then you will be invited in Manila for the final interview. And hopefully you will get the job offer at the end. <laughs> um, please follow us on the social media. We are, quite, uh, we are trying to be more and more present in the social media. One advice to you I wanted to give you before to leave, uh, to leave the stage is please try to be as much as possible, as Roberto was saying, visible on, uh, online. Build your, your uh, online profile. Uh, it could be either on LinkedIn or on Facebook or whatever platform, but you should be visible uh, on the social media because uh, our organizations do look more and more to your profile online. So, so design a very comprehensive and appealing profile online, and we'll be happy to, to find you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. For uh, the pitch for the Asian Bank, as you can see, there's some competition between uh, Manila and uh, Washington, and next will be London. So, Scott from the EBRD, over to you. And this the mic, and there's a screen. All right, thank you very much for attending. I'm delighted to see this many people here. Um, to answer the question that's on the screen in front of you, and as I said, I'm Scott Fitzgerald, and I work as part of the talent acquisition team. So there's four of us, meaning that um, there's a 1 in 25% uh, chance that I'll be reading your application when it comes through. And I've put behind us here a picture of our headquarters, which is in central London. 
And I like to add this one in just to prove the fact that occasionally the sun does shine in London. So <laughs> whatever you've heard, don't believe it. Now, the mandate of the bank, what makes us unique is we're an investment bank and we are profit orientated. The mentality of that being that uh, we don't compete with the private sector. That's the additionality principle you'll see there. We'll enter the market where the risk gets too high for them. But the reason we strive to make profit is if we can show the fact that there is uh, opportunity for it, then the private sector will follow us. And that's how we transition uh, the economies that we work in. Uh, in addition, sustainability, this is an increasingly important part of the bank. Uh, by 2020, we're looking to have 40% of our investments have a green economic transition element to them. So it's a good area, I think, for young people starting out their careers. This isn't really um, a, an area of a deep talent pool, so there's a lot of opportunity coming out for you. Now, I was asked to give a little bit about what we think the trends, the challenges um, in recruitment are going to be, and this is a pretty ugly slide because of the topic. Um, first and foremost, a lot of people probably have this question in the back of their head but might not want to ask it, so I'll answer it. Um, Brexit. We are not an EU institution. I think a lot of people assume that we are because they're a stakeholder. They own 10% of the bank, but we're not attached or affiliated outside of that with the EU. And the bank, when it was set up in 1991, um, someone had the foresight to put into the charter that will always be located in London. So the bank's not going to move. There won't be a relocation to Frankfurt, anything like that that you may hear in the press. But uh, it may have an impact on our countries of operation, particularly the ones who are within the EU institution. Um, the other things that come up uh, for us is increased competition with the private sector, particularly in areas like compliance, with uh, private sector banks routinely behaving poorly. And they've pulled a lot of the talent <laughs> to uh, redress that. Um, faster processes, so we're shifting now, um, just like my, uh, the previous people have said, onto online processes, trying to make the point from application to the point where you're actually in the bank quicker for you. And like I mentioned in the last slide, skill shortages in developing fields such as green economy. So how to apply? Um, <clears throat> two weeks is our normal application period, so if you haven't done this already, what I've told everyone who's come to visit us today at the booth, and what I'm going to tell you now is please go to our website and register for a vacancy alert. And from the 8th of November, you'll also be put into a talent pool so we can work proactively in partnership with you as well, identify your experience for roles as they come up rather than have to reactively apply for them. That'll happen from November 8th. In terms of how you format that application, um, the one thing I would say is do put together a covering letter. I think uh, this might be something that's a little bit more North American, but what I would do and encourage you to do is look to whose area you're going to be applying in. Do a little bit of background research and use flattery. Um, find out what they've been involved in, if they've got a journal report, if they've been on a presentation panel, and name drop that in your application because it goes down well with our hiring managers. Unofficially, of course, I've told you that. That's not the official line. But um, be patient as well. I said we're working towards getting things a little bit more streamlined, but you can expect from the point of your application um, to the actual offer, we're running about 60 days. So it's a little bit slower than the private sector, but that's just to give you an idea. And the last thing I would encourage you to do is brush up on competency-based interviewing. In 2014, we worked with the management consultancy to identify a set of 12 behaviors. We want everyone to come into the bank, and six of these are bank-wide. So have a look on our website. Um, they're hidden away in there for you, but you will be asked about at least three or four of these. So that's another good tip that just the people in this room are getting. Um, so with that, I'll pass it along to uh, Manette. Thanks, Scott. Thank Last but not least, uh, the African Development Bank and uh, Nati Satu uh, on stage. Thank you. Over to you. Hi, good afternoon everyone. I'm very delighted to be here in front of you this morning and uh, we'll be really happy to answer all of your questions. I had the pleasure to meet some of you already this morning at our booth and I encourage you to keep on coming and uh, asking questions specific to the African Development Bank. 
I'm glad to be last to present because a lot of the things that have already been said here are missing on my slides, but it's exactly the same because we are um, in the same sector, all these IFIs, doing the same things, uh, having the same mechanism and looking for the same pool of talent. So competition is high. Uh, and I think what differentiates us also very much is the location uh, of our different headquarters. Oops. So who am I? Uh, I think I'm the only one who followed strictly the slides we've been given by Sinfo, and I feel guilty of, uh, of that. But anyway, uh, I'm Nafisa Tundio Bella. Uh, I'm a division manager in the African Development Bank, uh, look in charge of uh, the division named uh, HR Client Services, looking after recruitment and business partnering into the different uh, departments of the bank. And um, as Roberto was saying, I'm coming also from the private sector. Um, I joined the bank three years ago, so I'm pretty new also in the bank. What's the African Development Bank? It's a group uh, constituted by three different entities. We have the African Development Bank that was established in 1964. We also have the African Development Fund, which is a, a, a fund uh, a, a trust fund established in 1972, and we also have a more uh, country-specific uh, fund called the Nigerian Trust Fund, established in 1976. Um, all these three entities constitute the African Development Bank, which has um, member countries from Africa, what we call the regional member country, the 54 uh, African countries, but also non-regional member countries coming all over the place uh, from Europe, um, North America, Asia, and, uh, and, 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 and Australia. The African Development Bank today uh, is uh, one of the five major multilateral development banks in the world. Uh, my colleagues here are the, the, the four others. And uh, as I was saying, we are based in, head, in our headquarters in Abidjan, in um, Côte d'Ivoire. And some saw that we are still in Tunisia because uh, 12 years ago, uh, because of the, 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 the political uh, disorder in Côte d'Ivoire, we had to move to Tunisia where we relocated, but now we, are coming, we have come back to our headquarters in, uh, in Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, it's been already two years and we are completely settled. We still have a small office in Tunisia. Well, medium-sized office in Tunisia, I would say, and we have uh, more than 35 other offices all located in Africa. We have a representation office in, in Japan, but it's really a very tiny office of four or five people. Our current uh, president, Dr. Triple A, we call him because his name, uh, Adeshina, um, his name, Akinyomi Adeb, Adeb Aden Yobi Adeshina. So he's, uh, he's the AAA at the, rated, at the rate of the bank. We are also a AAA rated bank. And yeah, so he signs AAA at the bank, so that's good. And we, our mission objective is as follows. It's really the, um, the to, to, to spur our sustainable economic development and social progress in its regional member countries thus contributing to the diminution of poverty. So it's really about the regional member countries because all our projects are based in Africa, although we hire people from regional and non-regional non member countries. Our values as far as human resources is concerned uh, are as follows, so it's excellence, team spirit, integrity, professionalism, and transparency. So in every candidate we look for these values. And every people we bring in on board has to have these values demonstrated during our uh, selection process. So um, as, uh, as, as, as my predecessor was saying, look at the different values our, our institution are looking for and focus on them, focus on demonstrating how, uh, and, and um, making sure how you can demonstrate them during your interviews, during your assessments. It's very important to be very specific. What makes us an employer, an employer of choice? Uh, we really have a lot to offer, and I think one of the things we offer is our location. Abidjan is a very beautiful country, uh, city to, to, to live in. It's uh, in Cote d'Ivoire in Africa. And uh, we really have very diverse, very uh, multicultural environment. Uh, I can't say the 78 plus um, nationals are represented in the bank because we have member countries that are not represented, just for lack of 
I don't know, candidates or whatever, it, there's no limit or no quota to anything like that. But uh, we really have a lot of, um, a lot of different nationalities that you will be interacting with when you, when, when you join us. Internationally, very competitive compensation package as well, if you enter the bank as a, as a, at the, at the professional, uh, at the professional uh, level. And uh, continuous professional development um, opportunities as well and a meaningful impact as an individual towards the development of Africa. You really have to want to develop the world to be able to join this IFI. This is really the passion that drives the candidates. Uh, also a very strong commitment to increasing uh, diversity in the workplace, gender, geographic representation, language and age. Uh, we require all the candidates uh, who will be joining us to speak either French or English and also to have a very good working know knowledge of the other language. Um, we have also um, reforms uh, being undertaken to improve our benefits, our career development, promotion, uh, the training and the performance management in the bank. So it's really um, a continuous uh, target for improvement. The employment opportunities we have at the bank, I think like all my, my, my colleagues that have presented before, uh, we have all the kind of the same different programs. We have an internship program which is really the entry, entry level that uh, allows um, people who are still at school and, 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 and about to graduate to have that first step in the bank and be able to have uh, three to six years, th three to six months of working experience with the bank. We ask them to, 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 to be to be still in the process of being graduated or maximum have graduated in the last year of the application. We have also the possibility to, to enter the bank as a consultant where we offer six months to two years of contract. Uh, short term staff as well, we do offer that and it's starting from 15 days, it's, it's mostly people who are based in Abidjan or at least in the, in the, in the neighborhood. Um, you can also be seconded to the African Development Bank or join us as a technical assistant. But the big, big portion of the opportunities are really in these two, um, the, the, the upper boxes at professional level. And we, it's a little bit scattered, our levels, because it can be different from our, our, our colleagues. Uh, PL, we have for professional level from PL8 to PL1, PL8 being the lowest and PL1 being the highest. So make sure when you apply that you get the right uh, grading system because some people have applied to PL8 thinking it was the highest of the, list of the grading. And we also have a um, young professional program uh, similar to what has been presented here. Um, the few difference I can say about um, about ours, it, the maximum age limit is 32 instead of 33 that you, you presented. But it's more or less the same required to have at least three years of experience, knowing that the program is a three-year program. By the time you finish the program, you have the minimum of uh, five to six years experience that is required to enter our entry level of a professional level. Uh, I think all that's here, I've already talked about it. Uh, so I want to thank you and uh, leave the floor for questions. Thank you. Nati Satu. Thank you. So I'm not sure if you have already made up your mind which location. Um, now I would like to ask the panel to come up here on stage for the Q&A session. Uh, while you're coming up, I just want to throw a number at you. Um, there was a recent study, a global study, around the average time a recruiter spends on a first screening of an application. And I found the results to be quite interesting. Uh, what do you guess? What would be the average time spent to review an application? And it was not related to international cooperation, it was just related to any job, any firm globally. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Doesn't seem to be much. 20 minutes? Seconds? Uh, okay, that's right. So 20 seconds on average, which uh, on Monday, Friday, <laughs> Friday is off, so, you know, bad luck. No, so, but think about it, the implication it has. So maybe you want to take some uh, reflection on what it means in order to structure a CV or, you know, um, 
how do you want to present yourself in order to be seen by the recruiter within just a few seconds? And I can speak for the CVs that we see. Uh, I also used to work uh, with the World Bank. And I must say, the, the Swiss, uh, typical Swiss application, you know, it doesn't quite, uh, you know, attract probably most of you. It's, it looks more like terms of references in terms of, uh, you know, and it should be more be about your achievements. So having said this, um, I hope you, you have uh, some good, some tough questions for, for our panels. Who would like to kick it off? Okay. Do we have a mic? Yeah, okay, a mic will be coming. All right. Um, so I want to ask a bit about how Brexit uh, and um, sort of visa policies, how, how might that be affected by the Brexit? Hello. Um, for us, it's... We've got an agreement with the Home Office, so we can sponsor visas, and that's actually a good point, because it doesn't just extend to the individual that we hire, but your spouse, your family are covered on that as well for the length of time that you work with the EBRD, and that's not going to change. Um, that agreement, uh, again, because it's not linked to the EU, is done through the Home Office. We'll still be able to maintain that. So, and I think this is actually a, a really good question because some people think, well, you know, the World Bank is based in Washington. I don't have a vi work visa. I mean, that's one of the locations, but I don't have a work visa for, for, the, for the states. You can still apply. Uh, as an international organization, they will actually be able to, to get a visa for you. And that's true for, for all the development banks. Okay, question at the very back. Yes, uh, I got it. we heard a lot about sustainability, and uh, my question is that um, once uh, you actually had on the one hand monetary interest, on the other hand sustainability. So if those two interests collide, how does the bank decide? I mean, all of your banks. I mean, do you really go for sustainability if it will diminish your investment? Who wants to go first on this one? <laughs> <laughs> Done? Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I don't have a straight answer to the question. You oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm Rohai. <laughs> no, that's okay. I'm Rohai and I'm Roberto's colleague. I was at the World Bank as an HR specialist. I've been with the bank 10 years now. I've been in the private sector before joining the bank. So, just to tell you that we do recruitarians, we don't recruit aliens. I mean, like, mm -hmm. so the perception is to get into this organization is really difficult, but everybody, depending on your background, you have a space at, in these organizations. To your questions, I mean, I know that for the World Bank, you know, we have sustainably department that is a huge department at the World Bank uh, that supports our investment and build the safeguards to make sure that we reach the impact we want to, to, to have uh, in, in the, those developing countries where we work. So we, I don't think we, we, we make a choice whether it's investment or safeguard. Even in the, in, in, in the IFC, which is our private arms, organizations, the environment and the sustainability department has a say to each of the investment that we have in, in those countries. So it's critical to make the impact we want to make in, in the country where we invest in. In relation to the EBRD, and I think it's a good question specifically for us because we've got a mandate now where we're looking to put 40% of our investments to have a green economic transition in the future, and, and that speaks directly to sustainability. But we won't sacrifice, uh, what we will do is we'll adopt a lot of financial risk. We're AAA credit rated and, and we'll enter the market, like I said, where the others won't. But what we won't do is take reputational risk. Um, I think for us to succeed and for us to do the work that we uh, are, are mandated to do, we need to protect that side of it. So if it's in an instance where we think that there's a profit to be made, but there's a, a long-term or a short-term side where it's not going to reflect good on the bank or upon the shareholder countries that we're involved in, we would walk away from it. 
or what we would do is we'd engage with the countries and we'd talk about how they can improve their political mandates, perhaps their financial markets, the structuring of those. If it's an equity investment, talk with the company owners and say, look, here's something we need to have more transparency in terms of your financial results. We need uh, an actual proper board and work with them as a consultancy matter to get to the point where we are comfortable to, to enter into the deal. Okay, there is another question in the front row. Patricia. Thank you. I'm Patricia from the Swiss Development Agency. Uh, I have a question related to uh, HR practices. Do you think you have a top-notch HR practices to attract the best talent? And what are some of the challenges you're facing? And since your banks, you know, maybe to compare with some of the recruitment practices uh, that private banks have. Okay, um, I'll, I'll try and, and start on that one. Patricia, I think that's a very good question. And it brings also the question of the competition that we face with the private sector. Because um, one, uh, one, one aspect where we really feel is the, the, the length and the bureaucracy of our processes. It's, it's really very, very, very heavy and it can be very slow in terms of processes. But I think uh, we are all trying to diminish our, 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 our decision making uh, time. Um, and if I, and, and really, for example, for the HR processes to try and get the, the the last trends of HR. For example, for the African Development Bank, I can say that we are, for, for the recruitment process, we are really aiming at recruiting in terms of assessment centers instead of just doing a face-to-face -face recruitment approach. Uh, having assessment centers that, uh, that, 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 that are structured around competence-based interviews, uh, but also video conferencing, um, you know, all those kind of things that really help you assess better a candidate and looking for a specific competence that you are looking for that you would not be able to get in a I don't know, 45 minutes face-to-face -face interview where the candidate is not at ease, is, 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 is really uh, in, a, in a different setup, while in assessment center you put the candidate at ease, you really try to get the best out of the, 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 the person. So those are kind of things that we try and do more and more. I think I share the same uh, points that my colleague just, uh, just mentioned. In ADB we also face the same challenges. We have quite uh, we had quite heavy processes in terms of um, the selection of candidates, so there is a bureaucracy. But you need to understand that uh, compared to the private sector, uh, there is one very important aspect, which is uh, fairness and transparency that we need to ensure in, in all the panel. So, for example, now we, we have implemented a new, uh, new measure is that when we do the shortlisting, it's not only done by the HR department, but it's done by the HR department plus the hiring department and an independent uh, colleague from, from another department. Uh, we do the same when we do the pre-selection and when we do the, the panel interviews. So yes, it takes a bit of time compared to the private sector where you just, you just want somebody and just, you just you take, you take this, that person and you hire her or him. You cannot do that in, in, in our environment. So we also um, uh, do our best to, to streamline our processes and to hire people as fast as possible, to be flexible, uh, to provide the right talents to our, our departments. So also we need to increase our diversity. Uh, this is also one challenge that we are facing uh, in the Philippines. Uh, so increase the number of women. Today we are at around 33% of our international staff are women. And we are uh, about to define uh, our new strategy for the coming years. and. Uh, hopefully, in to by 2030, we'll be reaching the, the gender balance 50-50 uh, in, the, in the headquarters. But it's a challenge. If I, if I may, just in terms of, um, so I mean, my colleagues, um, they spoke about the selection process. But I think once you get in, I mean, our organizations offer really an attractive employee value proposition which means that we really take care of our staff. Our benefit packages and our career development uh, programs are really um, good programs, I mean, in terms of retaining uh, our staff. You know, our, our, our turnover is literally not even comparable to the private sector. People who join our organization, usually they stay, they don't leave because, you know, you, you get exposure to 
all type of sector or practices, but also in terms of uh, project programs and carry opportunities growth within the organizations, it's very diverse. So with, once you get in, uh, it's really an attractive place to, to join these international finance institutions. I would just add, for us, I think we share some of the similar challenges in terms of time to hire, et cetera, but under our current president, there is um, a, a real point made to address these. So we've just recently introduced um, flexible working, remote working. We're giving a lot more uh, accommodation to, to people with that side of it. In terms of gender, I think we're ahead of the private sector. We have 55% females uh, working at the bank. And uh, the only challenge now is to make sure that that representation comes at the highest board level as well. But there's strict, clear um, development plans in place for that, and there's a lot of support being given to address these issues. So we're not ideal, but we're making good, good headway. Thank you, Scott. And I think we have time for one more question. Yes, at the back. Thank you. Uh, my question is more related to, uh, to the areas you work in. And I would just like to ask, um, what is your, um, how are you present in the migrant situation right now in Europe? Uh, some of you uh, operate in Europe, some of you operate in countries where the migrants come from. So my question is related to that. How are you present there? If you can stay brief. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a good question, of course, and uh, so one of the things that we are trying to do, is, of course, is harmonize with the other international organizations on different topics. So if you remember the slide when we, uh, we were trying to describe what the World Bank does in terms of cr cross-cutting areas and global practice, that's one that is called fragility, conflict and violence, and while we are not probably playing a leading role vis-a-vis -vis the migrants question. In the fragility context, uh, we are definitely involved. Uh, you will see, we're talking about countries that may be in a post-conflict situation or countries that are even affected by natural disasters. And yes, maybe again, as a recruiter, it's good to mention that the bank is playing uh, a role and will continue to play a role and in terms also of opportunities. And we talk clearly about countries that were uh, it's not easy to relocate, where to some extent we don't allow families to relocate. And uh, as a recruiter, when I see when the we advertise jobs in the fragility context, uh, the internal talent pool is limited. And even when we go outside, maybe the internal interest or, uh, is limited. So, you know, that's always something to keep into consideration. If you have a fragile related experience on your CV because of your voluntary work, because of your summer job, or because of your opportunities, this will send a very strong message, not, about, not only about your passion, but also about your flexibility, uh, avail availability to relocate, so maybe this is something to take into consideration. Maybe I didn't fully answer the question, but I think this is something that may be of interest for a, for a broader audience. Okay, well, thank you, panel. I think uh, they deserve uh, an applause. Uh, thanks to, to the panel. Uh,